Hello and welcome once again to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today's Sculpt January was Beard. Uh, so this is number 10 and you can see the work on the screen at the moment. I'm fairly pleased with it. Uh, it went relatively well. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say it went really well, uh, relatively well. And um, there weren't too many glitches this time. I think there's just a few sort of things about sculpting that you kind of have to get used to uh, that I need to be more aware of when I'm sculpting and uh, thinking about what I'm doing. Uh, I'll go through those in a bit. Uh, so uh, it took me um, over two hours, but not too much over. A uh, bit of faffing around with uh, texturing and uh, sorting out the normal maps, cavity maps, those sort of things, uh, which I have a tutorial on. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the same in 2.8, although you have got the ambient occlusion node now. Uh, which is, I, I do like that, I must admit. So I'm using the pointiness node and the ambient occlusion node and then baking that out to my low poly model. But that does take a fair bit of time and I decided to do the render uh, with just a slightly decimated model rather than a really low poly mesh with normal maps on and it looks slightly better. The only thing is with that that you can't go across to Sketchfab so easily. Um, because the, the poly count is so high. I think it ended up being 600,000 uh, faces. Uh, so you can imagine uh, that doesn't work too well <laughs> in terms of uh, online and that sort of thing. 40,000 is maximum for Sketchfab. Well, not maximum, optimum, apparently. Uh, you can see uh, I'm working on the eyes at the moment and I looked up how big should the eyeballs be? Because uh, you've it's five eyes, um, so my eye, if you look at my eye here, I'm trying not to poke myself in it, uh, you've got five of them across your head. So that's how you can measure eyes. And there's one eye uh, in the middle, sort of thing. So you've got sort of this three here, and then one either side of it, and that should be the right um, an anatomical correctness. But the actual eyeball, which I wanted to find out, how big is the actual eyeball so I could put a sphere into my face, uh, my beard, Beardy, beardy man, a dwarf beardy man over there. Um, uh, but so uh, I always thought they were quite big and there was only a small part of the eyeball showing, but actually they're, they're quite small uh, when I found out after a fair bit of research. It took me quite a while to find an image and uh, get used to it. Someone said, oh, they're 24 centimeters, no millimeters. That would sound right? Yeah, 24 millimeters. And I think, well, that doesn't really help me uh, because uh, I don't really want to have to measure my head and all this sort of stuff, but I get there in the end anyway. Um, so uh, the eyeballs uh, took me a while and I, th I still think they're too big. Uh, they look too big. Uh, I tried to sort of uh, measure them out, but they just look wrong. And that was the bit about this face. Uh, and it wasn't the most important part because the most important part was supposed to be the beard. So I didn't worry too much about it, uh, but it was frustrating uh, that uh, I couldn't get the eyeballs right. Uh, roughly got there in the end. I seem to have a problem with big necks as well. Dwarves are very sort of hench, aren't they? Uh, so um, this is obviously a dwarf uh, from sort of like the fantasy realm of Tolkien and so forth, if you weren't aware. And they're fairly hench and big necks and I uh, kept getting that wrong. And actually the shape's not too bad there, but then I sort of mess it up later. And right at the very end, I completely mess it up and I'm on a really high poly count and it's starting to lag. Uh, that was annoying and uh, my beard had sort of been connected, I booleaned it all together so it was difficult to uh, mess around with so I did make a bit of a mistake there uh, and it slowed me down. Anyway for the hair, so the original uh, model I just got my blob out and started sculpting uh, but for the beardy bits um, I used metaballs for the moustache just to get a shape and then um, set the scale in the middle, set the scale, set the origin in the middle so I could mirror it, then applied the mirror, uh, so I got two halves exactly the same. Uh, then just used icospheres for the other bit and pulled them around. Uh, I'm finding actually, uh, the more I think about it, the more, now I, now someone's told me about the rake on the, <laughs> uh, on the, uh, what's it, the snake hook tool. I, I didn't realize there was a, a rake option. Uh, and uh, I know I was, I was kind of supposed to be some sort of expert, but I didn't know about that. Uh, so quite a few people said, have you tried the rake? Uh, rake? Uh, and that, when you pull it out and you turn your mouse, it will rotate uh, your, um, what you're pulling out, uh, your mesh. Uh, 
try it, the rake, and you'll see what I mean. You, you, you only know what it means when you try it, but it's, uh, it's really useful. And uh, that might mean that I don't have to use metables so much because it's actually easier to control uh, pulling your mesh around with that rake. So thank you very much to all those people who uh, highlighted my ignorance. Uh, no, much appreciated. Uh, and I, I am very appreciative of all the tips because uh, sometimes you know them uh, and you just forget about them. Uh, other times they're just, you think, oh yeah, I hadn't thought about trying that. Uh, that's a great idea. Um, so that's more common than me knowing it, to be fair. <laughs> so uh, really pleased uh, with all the tips and tricks uh, that people have given me. Thank you very much. Uh, so you can see this uh, weird thing that I'm setting up here. He looks a bit strange at the moment, but he slowly gets there and uh, sort of works. Yeah, so I'm starting to think I don't like the final model now. Uh, it, when, when I'm looking back at... Uh, I suppose that's something that sometimes uh, you feel like it's getting worse as you're going along. Uh, I don't know whether you've ever uh, found that. And that can actually put you off uh, moving on with, a, um, with some of your sculpts and things because you're worried you're going to make it worse and therefore uh, it stops you wanting to work on it. Uh, but I suppose that must come with practice and things. Um, ah, yes, that I resized the face there slightly and then wondered why my eyeballs weren't fitting later on. It's funny these things, when you look back you think, oh yeah, that's that mistake, that mistake. Uh, this is actually quite a good process uh, for me, personally, reviewing my sculpts like this, because uh, one, uh, it's uh, you, you really get to look closely again at your the way you've made it, and uh, two, uh, reviewing it and self being self-analytical is supposed to be an important part of growth uh, and learning. And here I'm starting to think, oh yeah, I should have done that, I should have done that. Uh, so hopefully that will embed it next time I come to do it, uh, hopefully. Uh, now, um, I'm trying to uh, stick to two hours or so uh, for these sculpts. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm slightly ahead, so this is the morning of day 10, so I did this yesterday, uh, and I managed to get it done uh, in sort of my lunch hour, and uh, just before that, before going to college and things. Uh, so I'm slightly ahead, but I was hoping to be more ahead because I've got some projects coming up. Uh, so hopefully over the weekend I can get ahead of myself uh, so that when these projects come up they don't cause me project, pro uh, project? problems. Um, I can't remember why I was saying that. Oh yes, um, I got sl I slightly ill over the last couple of days. I've had this weird tummy bug and that just slows you down a bit. It wasn't too bad that I had to be in bed luckily, uh, but uh, it did make me less inclined to get up and do some sculpting. And it just affects your clarity. Uh, and your mind is sort of not really fresh and thinking. Uh, so uh, frustrations, but nothing major. Still managed to get it done, still very slightly ahead. And I've got, today is my day off, so I can try and get ahead, hopefully. Uh, so you can see me uh, blobbing out <laughs> the shapes here and uh, trying to get the sort of uh, rough dimensions. I wanted to reset the scale on everything because I can understand uh, why, and someone can tell me this one, um, my constant resolution uh, is different for different shapes, so I assumed that it was the scale. And then I tried setting the scale and it just went really massive, the moustache. So I'm not sure quite what happened there. I'm assuming that uh, when you set the scale, uh, it will set it to that size and constant resolution should be um, like blender units sort of thing. Which I think in 2.8R, they sort of set it to meters. Is it meters? I think anyway. Uh, so the constant resolution should be the same across each of the mesh, so I don't need to keep going in and changing them every time I change. That is one thing that people don't like about 2.8, and I can understand this, which is uh, if you've got different meshes, like I have here, and you want to uh, uh, cut between them, uh, change between them <laughs> in sculpt mode, you have to go back into layout and then back into sculpt mode. I suppose you can just go to object mode, but uh, it's, I find it quicker to go into layout, go into, back into sculpt mode, then turn Dine Topo back on and then start sculpting. And that's quite a few clicks and I'm finding it a bit irritating when I turn Dine Topo on uh, because every time it comes up with a warning and it's a bit laggy that warning. So I press on it and I think I've pressed it, move away and I haven't pressed it. And it, it's a bit frustrating when you're going in between your different um, objects. It, in some ways it can help you to be a bit more disciplined, work on that object a bit more uh, before moving on, because I like to move all the way around my mesh quite often, 
as I see things, I, I change them and move to the next bit, change and so forth. I think, actually, I think that's probably the best way of working because um, you're changing everything as you go along to the same resolution, so uh, the same detail level, um, which I, uh, which I always say is very important, you know, get your block out your simple shapes first and then details later. Uh, so uh, get, switching between those uh, different um, objects, uh, it would be nice if it was a quick process. So uh, not that any Blender developer is ever going to watch this, uh, but please can you sort that out? <laughs> uh, I think other people have asked for it anyway. So um, yeah, uh, that, that would be nice and hopefully that will come soon. Um, I think uh, for the most part Blender 2.8 was about Grease, Pencil and Eevee uh, and the sculpting uh, was sort of secondary a bit um, but uh, I think Eevee is uh, massive, uh, no, no doubt about it, but I think sculpting is a really big thing these days uh, because it's such a common workflow in studios. Uh, especially now machines getting more powerful, software is getting better and we can sculpt uh, with a bit more fidelity, uh, precision. Um, so uh, I, I, I hope they're going to look at sculpting more. That's just me, my personal. <laughs> I really want sculpting to be looked at and uh, worked on uh, so it can become closer to a ZBrush uh, or ZBrush. ZBrush. I say ZBrush because I'm British uh, to apologise. <laughs> Some people have commented on that before. Uh, I'll, I'm sure uh, they'll understand my Britishness. Um, anyway, uh, back to the sculpt. Uh, so you can see me working on the details. I didn't go uh, super detailed. It's interesting with things like hair because you can you, you can spend loads and loads of time and you can end up doing every strand uh, and that's just, it doesn't really make sense to do that. Uh, well, uh, in, in fact, it does make sense to do that and people do that uh, with sort of particle systems, hair systems, but when you're sculpting, it should be, well, in my opinion, uh, a bit more stylized. So, um, and, and in a way, try and help you to uh, look at the sort of bigger picture, the bigger meshes, the deep, uh, rather than the minor details, to try and give the illusion of uh, fluffiness of the beard. Um, hopefully that all made sense. So um, I started doing lots and lots of lines and then thought I need to be a bit more wavy about the hair, give it a bit more substance and volume and uh, yeah, uh, rather than just the clarity, if that makes sense. It's like uh, low poly artists when they manage to capture something and you think, oh wow, you've, you've captured that uh, high detail in this low poly mesh, it's, it, it's so clever. Uh, and the simplification of something is sometimes quite artistic and that's kind of what I was going for here. I think it turned out okay, the eyebrows were a bit, bit dodgy, a bit ropey, um, but um, I've, it's something I'm sort of learning, um, I would say. Uh, as I think maybe we're all sort of learning that as artists all the time as we go along and trying to improve our craft. So um, I didn't show the Boolean process because I was just getting lots of glitches so I thought there's no point in recording that because the screen will just be uh, like it's crashing all the time. And I had lots of problems with that. I did forget that uh, if there's two objects that you're trying to Boolean, I know that sounds silly, but if there's separate parts to an object, so one object that's got separate parts, like the moustache has two separate parts, the boolean doesn't work uh, and I, it took me ages to figure out why so I was trying to reset the scale and uh, move it slightly and all these different things uh, but once I did that uh, it was fine also another problem is uh, in 2.8 uh, it doesn't like high poly meshes being boolean together um, at the moment it, it, there could be a limitation of my computer perhaps uh, but it kept crashing uh, with hype so I had to uh, decimate them uh, in order to boolean them together uh, which is a bit frustrating because you can lose a bit of detail. Uh, oh, <laughs> Windows install coming up on the screen there. Um, yes, you can lose a bit of detail, but uh, and that, that that then becomes difficult. How far do I go before I boolean my objects together? And uh, I did want to boolean them together because uh, for export and all those things, being one mesh is so much easier when I'm going to Sketchfab. And if I want to sell the models and that sort of thing, it's better if they're one, uh, one piece. Uh, it, and also, uh, when it comes to repositioning things, it's kind of helpful. Actually, no, it's more helpful if they're separate in that sense. I did, um, I did a lattice on it. Uh, someone reminded me about the lattice 
um, it's a sort of, uh, it's, yeah, it's a modifier. So you add a lattice and you can sort of reshape things. I think Jan Sculpt did a good tutorial on that. Um, so worth uh, checking out. I'll try and remember to put that in the description. Uh, so I did a lattice just to give him a bit of head rotation because it's just sort of static and upright. It looks very stiff and um, awkward and I wanted to sort of change the pose. And uh, when you've got lots of different objects, you can do that still with a lattice. They can all be deformed by one lattice and that's fine. Uh, but I do find it a bit easier if it's one object and that's why I prefer to sort of boolean them together. Uh, but uh, I can see why people would want to keep everything separate and uh, in many ways that's uh, it is a, a fair bit easier. You can um, bake from lots of objects uh, onto a low poly mesh, uh, but it's a bit more awkward. You have to sort of Boolean them all, and if they're all really high poly at that point, they won't Boolean. So uh, you can see the difficulties and getting the timing right is quite uh, a tricky one. I thought uh, I could have gone a lot more detailed here, uh, but I thought my two hours are up, I need to move on to the next one. And I, I've certainly learnt a lot, learnt a lot here. Um, and yeah, I thought I'd just do these, uh, uh, we used to call them uh, in the Scouts, Woggles. Toggles? Woggles? They are called Woggles, aren't they? I don't know what they're actually called, those sort of little uh, met metallic things that dwarves have that hold their hair together. And you can see the problem I'm having with the, um, the, the sort of shoulders now, because I suddenly realised, oh, they, they don't look very good. Um, oh, what have I done here? Uh, I've lost my screen somehow. Oh, I think it was a crash, actually. Yes, it was a crash. Uh, and that was very upsetting. Uh, but actually, oh, thank goodness for the auto save, uh, auto recover, I think it's called. Uh, and it, it does seem to do a really great job. Uh, it saved me quite a few times because I would have lost about um, half an hour's worth of work there uh, because I'd forgotten to save. Uh, I should do a tutorial on that about uh, recovering your work because I, I kind of discovered it um, out of luck more than anything. Um, I'm sure someone's probably done some uh, somewhere. But it's, uh, it, the, yeah, you just go to file and there's auto recover and it's sometimes, well, it, in fact, every time for me so far, it's done a great job and recovered my work. Anyway, uh, there's the final piece. Uh, so this isn't, uh, this is sort of decimated high poly mesh rather than the really low poly and uh, fairly pleased. It would have been nice to texture definitely, uh, but uh, time, uh, maybe uh, texturary, uh, as someone mentioned, that's a good idea really. Uh, possibilities anyway. Um, also um, get across to the Discord server. Uh, here's Ashara's work, Dwagon it was called, and it got a staff pick so well done. I'm quickly going through these because uh, I don't want to take up loads of time, uh, but uh, lovely work from people. There's the Jacqueline Hyde um, stuff there, there's some speed work, uh, Sphere, like this one. Love the textures uh, that people are coming up with, uh, really nice. Uh, deep sea, uh, so a bit behind there, but uh, lovely to see work. Uh, brilliant stuff. It, and it, oh, that's a good one from Double Tap. Uh, yep, very nice. Uh, like the idea with that one. There's uh, Matthias uh, with his wacky weird work. Uh, I can't, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember everybody's uh, name, and it's going too quickly for me to recognise. Uh, that's I think that one was Manu Hu. Uh, I like the materials in this one. This was great. Um, they just look disgusting, <laughs> so well done there. And, and the, the lighting on that one's really good. The shadow, I thought about doing the shadow thing as well for Jekyll and Hyde, that's nice. Uh, lovely one there, great work and uh, great expression there. I think that was Manu Who's actually, so who was the other one? Anyway, uh, sorry if I've got names wrong and in the wrong order. Uh, some great work coming through here, so do get across to the Discord server, uh, join in. Uh, you don't have to do every day of Sculpt January, uh, it's not really the point, the point is learning. Uh, Lyrum, well done for putting your name on your uh, post, then I can easily see it. <laughs> uh, so I think my favourite, I was sort of scrolling back through them again, uh, was this one from Double Tap. Uh, lots of effort gone into that and a great idea. Anyway, thanks uh, for all your support once again and uh, do uh, get across the Discord server and chat to me there if you haven't already and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.